Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this wonderful day. The sun is shining, our hearts are open, and we anticipate participating together in a wonderful experience. I am Carol Hunt, minister, and this is Unity in Harlem. We are here every Sunday at this time. Today is a particularly wonderful and exciting day. For this is the day we celebrate people of African descent. We will be so grateful to hear of the lives of individuals who have contributed and made history during the year 2021 and the 403rd year of our presence here in America. Sit back, stay alert, and flow with us into this journey of hearing about lives that are absolutely remarkable. Greetings, everybody. It's uh, just such a wonderful opportunity to sing this song by James Weldon and J. Rosamond Johnson. It's called Lift Every Voice and Sing. Sing along with me if you'd like. Stand just like your mom used to do. <laughs> Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty Let our rejoicing rise High as the listening skies Let it resound loud as a rolling sea we sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers died we have come over a way that with tears has been watered we have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of a bright star is cast. It is such an honor 
to sing this song, Lift Every Voice and Sing. We usually called it growing up the Black National Anthem. It is a song that is an honor to sing because it's it's meant so much for Black and Brown people across our nation as we've been displaced, some of us, and a, across uh, 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 what we can own for ourselves from our history. And I'm just excited to, to uh, share with you this marvelous presentation, which uh, Bob Ponce has worked so very hard on and Carol Hunt. Thank you so much. Isaiah 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Unity affirmations speak to the power of our words and particularly the power of I am. And so we say this affirmation every Sunday to affirm our divine nature. The words are on the screen and I invite you to say them with me. I am an abundant radiating center of God's love and light for peace, healing and inner truth for all. Thank you, Bob, for those words that highlight the power of words. And certainly today, we are more attuned to that and more sensitive to it. And Marie singing the Black National Anthem, I'm sure there have been times when we have focused on those words. And the words are powerful. And they have life in them in such a way that it is eternal. So indeed, words are important and carry energy from generation to generation as the words of Isaiah and spoken by Bob clearly show. And we will now prepare ourselves with words again. These words are the quietness that we hear from within. Perhaps guided by me, but it is time for you to turn on your listening ear your inner ear as you listen to words that now will fill our space with power, with understanding, with love. And so now take time to become comfortable. If there's anything around you, set it aside and bring your whole attention to these few moments. Simply a time to become quiet, set other thoughts aside and be in the moment fully. Closing your eyes are always good. And focus instead within.
Take a deep breath. And exhale the breath slowly. Take another deep breath. Exhale slowly. small. Breathe in deeply. Exhale slowly. Feel more quiet. Allow yourself to release any concerns you may have that are not about the network. Set those thoughts aside. Breathe into the space that's around you. Let that space feel comfortable, free from confusion, free of any debris. Let it be relaxed. Allow yourself to be in the center of comfort. Comfort all around you. Call yourself to be open, receptive, and alert, alert to hear something new, see something from a new perspective, bless every word that's shared. Be thankful for the privilege of being here. Give thanks to the thought within yourself that has led you to this present moment. How grateful we are for our divine identity that when we are open and receptive, we are led to only good. There is nothing negative that surrounds us when we are open and receptive to the prosperous nature of who we are, the creative truth of who we are. Let us give thanks and praise to the Father within, to the divine within that has been awakened. And each of us has listened.
we give thanks. We remain open. We remain receptive. And we know that the energy of what we will experience will remain with us and with others for a long time to come. And now we give thanks for all the participants the hours of work that has gone into this experience for the day. We thank them from our heart, full of love. We take a deep breath and release the breath. We breathe in again and feel the energy of the breath as it flows through our body. We are ready. And we say these words in the name of our way shower, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, friends of Unity in Harlem. My name is Carrie Cornelius. I'm pleased to be with you today and serve as your narrator in this breaking news presentation of history-making individuals who are of people of African descent in 2021. Very unique. I'm coming to you today from commercial radio station WUIH. And I must say, as I looked over the lineup, you have chosen some of the most interesting individuals and events of that year. 2021 was a remarkable year of recognition and achievement. Out of the 10 first, you have chosen five of them. Congratulations. Oh, before we begin, let me thank each volunteer for the time and effort put into researching each person, distilling that information as your minister, Carol Hunt, has shared with me to fit our format today. What an exceptional line of commitment. Thank you so much. Let us begin. Who of us has not heard the name Maya Angelou? I understand she owned a brownstone in Harlem, near where Unity in Harlem had been meeting in person. What a great piece of history to put in the archives of your center. Not only that, she was a practicing truth student. I've been told, see, I did a little research myself. Ann Jackson, please come forward and share more of Maya, Maya Angelou's history-making life. Legendary American poet, writer, and civil rights leader, Maya Angelou became the first black woman to be featured on a U.S. quarter this year which the U.S. Mint began shipping on January 10th. 
Angelou is also the first to be featured in the U.S. Men's new series called the American Women Quarters Program. Twenty influential women will have their faces depicted on the 25 cent piece over the next four years, with the honorees being chosen among those who have made contributions in the field like suffrage, civil rights, science, the arts, and government. The Mint has stated that the women honored will be from ethically, racially, and geographically diverse backgrounds. Mint Deputy Director Ventress Gibson said in a statement, each 2022 quarter is designed to reflect the breadth and depth of accomplishments being celebrated throughout this historic coin program. Maya Angelou featured on the reverse of this first coin in the series use the words to inspire and uplift. Designed by artist Emily Damstra and sculptor Craig Campbell, the image of Angelou on the tail side of the quarter depicts her with arms outstretched towards the sky. Behind her are a bird in flight and a rising sun, images inspired by her poetry and symbolic of the way she lived. The Mint explains on its website, to the right are the words e pluribus unum, Latin for out of many, one, a phrase also on the national seal. The flip side features a portrait of George Washington. Angelou isn't just famous for her poetry. She also worked as a journalist, actress, dancer, teacher, social activist, and author. After dropping out of school to become San Francisco's first black trolley driver, she spent several years acting in plays on and off Broadway, including Cabaret for Freedom. Her interest next took her into the world of writing, joining the Harlem Writers Guild and editing newspapers in Egypt and Ghana. She gained international recognition in 1969 with her autobiographical uh, article, uh, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, a groundbreaking memoir about life in the Jim Crow South which was among the first autobiographies by a 20th century Black woman to reach a wide general readership. Angela also wrote more than 30 best-selling volumes of verse, fiction, and nonfiction. She also worked for social change with Martin Luther King being appointed the Northern Coordinator for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Her talents were later honored by two U.S. presidents. In 1983, Angelou recited her poem, On the Pulse of Morning, during the inauguration of Bill Clinton, becoming the first woman poet to perform at a presidential induction ceremony. A rock, a river, a tree, hosts to species long since departed, marked the mastodon, the dinosaur, who left dry tokens of their sojourn here on our planet floor. Any broad alarm of their hastening doom is lost in the gloom of dust and ages. But today, the rock cries out to us clearly, forcefully, come, you may stand upon my back and face your distant destiny. Then in 2011, Barack Obama awarded her with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, applauding her as one of the brightest lights of our time, a brilliant writer and fierce friend and truly phenomenal woman. Before her death in 2014 at age 86, Angelou also received more than 30 honorary degrees from universities, across the country. California Representative Barbara Lee, who helped introduce the Circulating Collectible Coin Redesign Act of 2020 that opened the door to the American Women Quarter Program, also praised the new quarter design. The phenomenal women who shaped American history have gone unrecognized for too long, especially women of color, Lee said in a tweet proud to have led this bill to honor their legacy. 
She added, if you find yourself holding a Maya Angelou quarter, may you be reminded of her words. Be certain that you do not die without having done something wonderful for humanity. U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Janet Yellen, the first woman to be appointed to that position, got to help select this year's coin honorees. Each time we redesign our currency, we have the chance to say something about our country, what we value, and how we progress as a society. Yellen said in a statement, I'm very proud that these coins celebrate the contributions of some of America's most remarkable women, including Maya Angelou. What group of people can resist its own holiday? Not only one agreed upon among them, but now accepted and signed into law by the United States of America. In every endeavor that comes into law, there's always a principal person that spearheads that endeavor. In this case, it is Opal Lee. Nancy Causey, please share all about this remarkable woman and the law that resulted from her work and others. A historic event took place on June 17, 2021, when President Joseph Biden signed the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act into law recognizing June 19th as a federal holiday. Attending this event as an honored guest was 94-year-old Opal Lee, affectionately known as the grandmother of the Juneteenth movement, who made it her lifetime mission to see Juneteenth become a federal holiday. One might ask why June 19th was made a federal holiday. What is so important about this day? 159 years ago, on January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which officially declared an end to slavery in the Confederate States. It took two and a half years before the news of the end of slavery reached enslaved African Americans in the state of Texas. That day, June 19, 1865. Who is Opal Lee? It is my honor to present to you a brief look at the life of a remarkable and dynamic African-American Shiro. Nobel Peace Prize nominee Opal Lee is an African-American retired teacher, counselor, and activist who was born in Marshall, Texas, on October 7, 1926. When Opal was 10 years old, her family moved to an all-white neighborhood in Fort Worth, Texas. On June 19, 1939, 500 white rioters vandalized and burned down her family home. Opal's parents never talked about this terrifying incident. Instead, they channeled their energy into working hard to get enough money to buy another house for their family. Whether Opal's parents realized it or not, they were setting an excellent example of courage and perseverance for Opal and her two brothers. Opal had a thirst for education. At the age of 16, Opal graduated high school. But instead of going to college, as her mother hoped, Opal got married. After four years of marriage and four children, Opal divorced her husband and went back home. She had a desire to continue her education, and with the help of her mother, she worked two jobs while attending college and received a bachelor's degree in elementary education and a master's degree in counseling and, and guidance. Opal's faith and confidence inspired her at age 89 to conduct a symbolic walk from Fort Worth, Texas to Washington, D.C. She left Fort Worth, Texas in September 2016 
and arrived in Washington, D.C., January 2017. Opal's journey into history gave her the opportunity to educate people about Juneteenth and to gain support and signatures for her mission. By the time she reached Washington, D.C., she had over 1.6 million signatures on her petition. This victorious walk was successful in uniting people of diverse backgrounds from all over the country. On June 17, 2021, at age 94, Opal saw her hard work pay off as a bill to make Juneteenth a federal holiday passed Congress and was signed into law by President Joseph Biden. In January 2022, a well-deserved honor was bestowed on Opal Lee when 33 members of Congress signed a letter nominating her for the Nobel Peace Prize. Opal Lee may be called the grandmother of the Juneteenth movement, but she will go down in history as a queen mother who dedicated her life to teaching and being of service to others, fighting for justice and equality for all, and was instrumental in inspiring the movement that united the country to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. Peace and blessings, Queen Mother Opal Lee. I hope you like opera. It had to grow on me, once growing with the rhythm and story I have come to love it. Ann Stenson will now share a true first for New York City's Metropolitan Opera House. And come and let us hear about the composer, Terence Blanchard. On September 27, 2021, for the first time in its 138-year history and after an 18-month closure, the Metropolitan Opera opened the season with a work by a black composer, Terence Blanchard's Fire Shut Up in My Bones. To quote the New York Times reviewer, by opening the season with this work, the Met filled a gaping hole in its repertory. In the next few minutes, you will hear a lot of names that may not be familiar to you. I wish I had time to do them justice here, but every artist on this creative team is recognized as a world-class talent. The general manager of the Metropolitan Opera, Peter Gelb, was deeply affected by the murder of George Floyd. He contracted Terence Blanchard about this opera. On opening night, Fire Shut Up in My Bones was simulcast live in Times Square. To experience almost nine minutes of triumphant happiness, go to YouTube and watch the opening night curtain call. The opera received rave reviews. Every performance was sold out. And a live simulcast was shown in movie theaters around the world. This global simulcast was hosted by Audra McDonald. Her resume of awards, accomplishments, and contributions is too long for this space. She has won more Tonys than any other actor. In 2016, she was awarded the National Medal of Arts by President Obama. The composer, Terence Blanchard, is a six-time Grammy Award-winning jazz musician and composer, perhaps best known for the scores of 15 of Spike Lee's film. His father was an amateur baritone and an enthusiastic opera fan. Terence Blanchard points out that he is not the first black composer whose work merited a place on the Met stage. He cites the work of William Grant Still, a prolific composer whose African Afro-American symphony premiered in 1931 and until 1950 was the most widely performed symphony composed by any American. He was also the first American composer to have an opera produced by New York City Opera. He submitted three operas to the Met, all of which were declined. Cassie Lemons, a multi-talented artist, director of the 2019 film Harriet about Harriet Tubman, adapted Charles Blow's book into an operatic story. 
She is now the first black librettist in the Mets history. Camille A. Brown, co-director with Jim Robinson, is the first black artist to direct a Metropolitan production. And she is the choreographer. She's a native New Yorker from Queens, a graduate of LaGuardia High School for the Performing Arts and the Ailey School. Camille A. Brown opened Act 3 with a step dance theme that stopped the show. She said that after the Mets' history of exclusion, having an HBCU step dance rooted in African culture was important. Paul Tazewell, the costume designer, has won many awards, including the 2016 Tony Award for Hamilton for Best Costume Design. This is his first opera at the Met. With fire shut up in my bones, my wife had read the book first, you know, and she was really heavily affected by the book. And then she gave it to me to read and gave it to Jim Robinson, who was the director of Opera Theater St. Louis and also co-directed this production. And we all fell in love with it. And I knew in order to take that from book form into libretto form, we needed the right person to do that. And Casey Lemons is a person that I've worked with for a number of years making films. And I knew she was also not only a great director, but a great writer. So we called her in and immediately she got it. You know, uh, the next step was to actually have a sit down with Charles, Casey and myself and the production team in St. Louis. And we just sat down and talked about the process. Casey had tons of questions for, for Charles. As a matter of fact, I always used to feel sorry for Charles. We were there for three days and they looked like the two stooges, man. Cause whenever, whenever you would see Charles, Casey was right behind, you know, asking, what about this? But what about this? You know, they went on for like three days, but she really wrote a beautiful libretto as a result of it and uh, just kind of set the tone. And here is the trailer from the Met, which will give you a capsule experience of the drama. He has to bleed, he has to die. Another name known the world over is Josephine Baker, who chose to live abroad. Tommy Thompson will tell the story of how she made history in year 2021. Quando me grande se va, io mi pare tambo, je vuoi in via la vostra. <laughs> ah, la Josephine Baker, American-born entertainer, French resistant agent, and civil rights activist, 2021, November 30th, the first black woman buried at the Pantheon in Paris. Mm, the country's highest honor. She was the first black woman to star in a major motion picture the 1927 silent film, Siren of the Tropics. Baker became a megastar in the 1930s. 
especially in France, where she moved in 1925, as she was seeking to flee racism and segregation in the United States. St. Louis, Missouri, she renounced her United States citizenship and became a French national after her marriage to French industrialist Jean Leon in 1937. She raised her adopted rainbow tribe, her children, in France to signify that peace with everyone of all race, creeds, and colors would be the only way for victory in this world. After her death in 1975, Baker was buried in Monaco, dressed in a French military uniform with the medals she received for her role as part of the French resistance during the war. A civil rights activist, she took part in 1963 in the March on Washington for jobs and freedom alongside the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King as he made his I Have a Dream speech. Josephine Baker was the talk of the town no matter what town she was in. A true global superstar, she was never properly lauded in her own country because she steadfastly refused to perform anywhere where all people could not attend. Charismatic, caring, and passionate about human rights, her journey from the streets of St. Louis to the Pantheon in Paris made her an icon of the jazz age and a beacon of world peace and understanding. Merci beaucoup, Josephine. has been a phenomenal time of celebrating and learning about the lives of our heroes and sheroes. Unity in Harlem, you have included different generations who have fearlessly given of themselves in the spoken word, music, poetry, and advocacy, which will be written in the history books for years to come. To all the volunteers, our thanks does not seem to be enough. You were wonderful. Let us not forget the talents of those who are behind the scenes. They make all of it come together in a beautiful, seamless mosaic. Thank you, Bob Ponce. It has been wonderful being with you today. I hope you continue lifting up people of African descent who gave of themselves, not just for us, but for everyone. Thank you for inviting me.
thank you, Carrie Cornelius. And thank you to radio station WUIH. Thank you for being our narrator and introducing each of our friends here at Unity in Harlem. I know those who are listening can't thank everybody enough for giving us a taste of each of these individuals, a taste that seemed enough, but yet not enough, filled uh, with the life and work of these individuals. Certainly our lives have been blessed and they are a blessing and will be co continue to be a blessing for generations to come. Thank you to each of you for the time and effort that you have put into making this Sunday, February 20th, 22, a memorable one for unity in Harlem. And I too would echo the words of Carrie Cornelius for the, those who are behind the scenes. The work of putting together this film of the individuals who spoke, of all the graphics and pictures we saw, and how it all flowed into a wonderful presentation. Robert Ponce, when others see this, they will come looking for you, but you cannot go anywhere. You belong to Harlem. Unity in Harlem. Again, Thank you. To Ann Stenson about fire shut up in my bones and Terrace Blanchard and Jackson about Maya Angelou and the American Quarters Program, Nancy Causey, about the mother of the movement, Oprah Lee, and Tommy Thompson, about Josephine Baker. Thank you for your work and thank you for your presentation. And Marie Ponce, thank you for opening our program with Lift Every Voice and Sing. Yes, every voice has been lifted this morning. We'll continue with our service and <clears throat> join now in a prayer request, tithe, and offering. Our prayer request today is filled with gratitude, filled with thanksgiving for the lives that have contributed so much to our world and for the life of each person who has brought 
those lives to us, made them come alive in our midst. We give thanks always for the privilege of being together and sharing in the abundant prosperity that we live in. We give thanks also for all those who may never be presented, but yet their giving flows into this stream of consciousness of those who gave and we remember. So we remember them too. We may not know their names, but we know that they gave. We bless them. and know it in the name of the Christ. We think now of the gift that we would share with unity in Harlem. We hold it in our hand, place it on our heart, or see it in our mind's eye. Again, giving thanks for the prompting of spirit to give. It is truly one experience, giving and receiving. As we give, so we receive. This has been demonstrated before us today. As we give, so we receive. We bless what we give and we see it multiplying over and over and over again. Truly this giving and taking time to look at the lives of the past has blossomed and grown over time. As we give, so we give and it multiplies. And we remember the words that we see on the screen. I will say them and then you can repeat them with me after. Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. Shall we all know it together? Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. So be it. I will share now with you our announcements for the coming week. Our fellowship, which we will have directly after our service, our Tuesday study group from 6 to 8 p.m., and our Friday prayer circle, from 6 to 7 p.m., you can connect by Zoom with the number 698-428-2725. And if you want to dial in by phone, that number is 929-205-6099. 
the passcode 777-7777. Our Monday meditations continue for the month of February, and you can call this number, 717-908-8. 1837 with the passcode 360392. You want to start today, end the day, or have a uplift during the day every Monday. You can have five minutes of meditation. The Unity in Harlem Gospel Gram. For February, you can find it on YouTube. F, I'm sorry, featured on Unity in Harlem's Facebook. Anyone wanting to speak to me, the minister, about a personal problem, please feel free to call me 648-481-1844. Next Sunday, February 27th, will be the last Sunday that we will feature an emphasis on the year, the art of the year, 403. And the title will be Remember Hindsightedness and Foresightedness. I hope that catches your imagination and you will join us. Also next Sunday, the annual meeting of Unity in Harlem will happen directly after the service. And at that meeting, there will be a special announcement. Please make every effort to join us hear about the accomplishments over the year and that special announcement. On the screen is the prayer of protection. Join me. The light oh. of God surrounds us the, the love of a god, god enfolds us. us the power the of god, god protects us. us the presence Christ. of god, god watches, watches over us, us. wherever we, we are god, god is, is and, and all, all is well is well Hi there. <laughs> Hi there. I think it was, it was a special day, so I've decided to come back, come out from behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Just thank you. And I'm sure everybody who can see you is um, giving you an applause. And I also and have some applause you. for all of the participants. Hold on. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Hey, is that for me too, Bob? Yes, for you too, our <laughs> singer, for that wonderful rendition of Lift Every Voice and Sing. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> All right. So is it time for the peace song? Yes, it is. And we have yeah. a special for that as well. Yes. Yeah, All right. Special guest. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. 
With God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Yay. <laughs> Peace.